the opening describes a uh, it's night, it's a dark room, uh, dark space, and we're pushing in on a uh, a room. Now, whether or not the actual film begins that way, don't know. Uh, but there was something mysterious about starting in the dark and then pushing into the light and then finding this human being in the light, essentially working on himself to an extreme state. That thrust, that element caught me uh, from the beginning. And then from there, reading, the objective for me is to see if the writer is going to uh, uh, renege on this, uh, this theme and this texture. And by the time I got to the end of the page um, and end of the end of the picture, um, he had only doubled down. Um, and the mm. person he was having, you know, move through this world uh, was this guy named Killian Maddox, and he wanted me to play that. And so I went, I'm all the way in. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. You know, I think of films like um, Hunger or The Machinist, you know. Um, where the physical transformation is such an integral part of the storytelling. Um, and everybody wants to do one of those. You think you're tough enough to do one of those. Um, but what you don't plan on, or what you don't know in watching the film is that as the body changes, so does the mind. Um, and so the emotional work and the character work in the spine of the film was actually being done in the gym. And as I found myself being more uncomfortable uh, with I ever mentioned bench press uh, or leg squat, um, as my body began to tear and grow and heal, um, so did the character. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of lifting, a lot of, a lot of lifting weights and stuff. To the best of my ability, I try not to reference any other movies. I think if if you're someone who likes movies and watches a bunch of them, it's hard for some of the greats like Taxi Driver not to kind of get in there some way or another. But we, ne we never discussed it. And we actually made it a point not to reference it in any way. Um, and then uh, from a writing standpoint, um, you know, yeah, I guess, I, de I guess it does have a lot to do with now being kind of where our society is and, and kind of where our culture is nowadays. But tried to write something that felt timeless in a way. And that wasn't that didn't feel too much like it was ripped from the headlines or that it was trying to make too much of a statement about today, but rather the human condition in general, um, especially the the male human condition. The, and 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 then it deals with issues that feel uniquely American and things that pertain to kind of uniquely American male experiences, for better or worse. Um, and that's what I remember going back to when I was writing? To be honest, I, I've said this so many times, but I can't emphasize it enough, that when I read it, I was like, I don't care if I play it the server in the back <laughs> or a napkin or the chair. I just want to be a part of this for the, because it. I have, I forever want, it's just, I think it's one of the best things I've ever read. I honestly, truly mean that. Yeah. And could not stop thinking about it. As I was reading it, it was like, it's like you have a little scab and you like, you know, you're not supposed to pick your scabs, but imagine you keep picking the scab and it just won't stop going and it just goes and it just keeps bleeding and you just keep picking it and it's just mm -hmm. like I just, but I didn't want to stop picking the scab. Nice. <laughs> I, I just like, I don't know where that just came from, but I mean like I, <clears throat> I'm a big confronter. Mm. I think we t collectively need to confront and take care of each other. And I felt like when I read this, I was like, I was sobbing and I was like, we are all responsible for this man, mm. for where he ends up. If he ends up in jail or he ends up dead or he ends up killing somebody or himself, it's our fault. Mm. And I want to be a part of, mm. like, I don't know what the fuck else we're talking about. You know what I mean? Like. Sorry to be crass, but it's kind of like Get them tight. Get I just them. think Get we're them. it's there's an urgency, like we we all are in need of saving and healing and like <clears throat> loving each other. Mm -hmm. You know? So I just pink coat to me was like, well, we had talked about of course we both I didn't want, 
you know, nobody wants to be typecast, and I've obviously played a sexually pleasing person before, but <laughs> there's so much nuance, and there's like diversity in in those mm -hmm. people, and also she is to me. I I told Elijah I felt like she was like his mom, not in the sexual way, but maybe you could get forbidden with it. I don't know, but just like mm -hmm. in terms of her care and and is the only person that talks to him like a human and sees him like a human being and in the confines of this room they're safe and there's just that divine feminine love that's that's i see you and you see me and we're kind of who who are we in this on this planet like don't you feel like weird here um and, but also I feel like Elijah wrote her so, like, so brilliant. It's, she exists almost as like, is she a figment of his imagination? Like we don't, you know, like she's almost like an angel, mm -hmm. but, but, but flawed cause she's in her flesh. A raw angel. A raw <laughs> angel, yeah. Like. That's your memoir. Raw <laughs> angel. Raw angel. Yeah. Uh. He did that though. He did that. Yeah. yeah. What I love about Jesse is yeah, I think she's she's just so much a part of this world that Elijah has created, and um, I think she's someone who really um, who, who has high hopes. So, you know, she wants to make she wants to connect, but she's afraid that she's not lovable, and mm. that you know, I think she's I think she's really a, a really simple uh, woman, a quite she's shy she's timid she but she i think she she holds back because she's afraid that she's embarrassing or she 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 doesn't often put herself out there and then um she has you know she's i think she's really amazed that uh that killian has asked her on a date i don't think that she's someone that goes on a lot of dates like i think she doesn't want to put herself out there and put herself in the position to be judged or rejected or um, hurt. Um, and I think she really, what I loved about this part was that she, like this is the moment that she puts herself out there and um, allows herself to be vulnerable. And there's such um, like a glim like glimmer of like hope and, 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 um, and I just loved exploring those kind of aspects of um, re relationship uh, mm -hmm. of connection and then disconnection.